By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of Fujifilm's focus modes and best practices to get the most out of your Fuji camera and capture images more effectively and efficiently. Let's get it. So the three focus modes I'll be going over are manual, single, and continuous. On the X100V, you can find the focus mode selector on the left side of the camera just underneath the strap eyelet. So why have three focus modes? This is because each mode has its own usefulness and perform best under its intended usage scenarios. This is not to say you can't stick to just one and shoot any scenario, it is fully possible to do that. It just won't be as effective and you will more than likely miss focus if you select the wrong mode for the task at hand. We will begin with manual focus mode, then move to single and finally continuous. I did it in this order because there will be extra settings you will need to know as we change modes, so bear that in mind. If you get stuck at any time, you can always backtrack with timestamps in the description box below. Manual focus mode is exactly what you think it is. You have complete control over focusing the lens. Just rotate the dial clockwise to focus further away and anti-clockwise to focus closer. You can reverse the focus ring rotation by going to the button dial setting and selecting focus ring. Now let's look at some extra settings we can adjust while in manual focus mode. To access these settings, go to the AFMF icon. We will work down the list for relevant settings. First is focus area. It will bring you back into live view and using the rear control dial, you can adjust the size of the focus box and with the joystick, move the focus box around. You can also access the focus area quickly from live view simply by pressing down on the joystick. Even though the camera is in manual focus, the focus box still plays an important role. When you press down on the rear control dial, you will zoom in on the focus box position of the scene. This will allow you to make finer adjustments to your focus. Number of focus points will dictate how many points will appear when you access focus area. You can select either 117 points or 425 points. This comes down to preference and what you are shooting. The more points you have on the live view, the harder it is to navigate quickly through the points, especially if you have touch functions turned off. If you have touch functions set to shot, AF, or area, then you will be able to control the focus box by pressing down on the joystick and use your fingers to move the box around. Now we come to the most important setting for the manual mode, MF Assist. Standard will not provide you with any extra guides through the electronic viewfinder or live view. You will have to trust in your eyes to ensure whether or not something is in focus. Next is digital split image, and you will have two to choose from, monochrome or color. This will create a large square box made up of four horizontal bars in the center of your screen. When out of focus, there will be a slight offset of the subject in frame when looking at the four bars. As you adjust focus, the image will slowly become less offset until the lines all match up between all four bars. Next is digital micro prism, which may not be available for older model Fuji cameras. And this works the same way as split image focusing, but instead of four horizontal bars, you have a circle with many small squares. It works essentially the same way. Finally, we have focus peak highlight, which is by far the most effective and thus most popular way of focusing on Fuji cameras. Select a color of choice and the intensity. When focusing, anything that is in focus will have a colored outline around it. Next in the settings is focus check. When focus check is on, whenever you begin to turn the focus ring of the camera, the viewfinder or live view will automatically zoom in to the position of the focus box. Half pressing the shutter button will return you to the original scene. Next, we have instant AF setting. You have two options, AFC, which is continuous autofocus, and AFS, which is single point autofocus. Wait, why are we talking about autofocus in manual mode? Sometimes when you are manually focusing, it takes a long time to focus from near to far or vice versa. Without having to switch focusing modes, you can still access single point or continuous autofocus in manual mode simply by utilizing back button focusing. The button with AEL and AFL written next to it, when pressed, will engage single point or continuous autofocus. If continuous autofocus is selected, 
by holding down the AEL AFL button, it will continuously adjust focus on whatever is within the focus box. When the button is released, you will be returned to manual mode where you can proceed to fine tune the focus. And finally, there is depth of field scale. If you take a look in the electronic viewfinder or live view, there is a distance scale at the bottom of the screen. There is a white marker with two blue lines to either side. Depending on what aperture you set and what focus distance you are focusing at, the blue lines on either side will get longer or shorter. The white marker is the exact distance of your focus point and the blue lines on either side mark the effective distance in front and behind the focus point that are also in focus. Now, when the depth of field scale is in pixel basis, it is calculating the exact distances where things are in focus. Everything out of the blue lines is technically out of focus. When in film format basis, the blue lines become a bit wider compared to pixel. This is because the human eye is not perfect at identifying exact focus. There is an extra bit of distance where things may seem to appear in focus, and that is what film format basis takes into consideration. Fujifilm recommends using pixel basis when displaying your photos digitally and film format basis when producing large prints. But I think the film format basis works well if you want to practice zone focusing, which I may make a separate video on. Alright, now let's move on to the next mode, single shot. Some of the settings I talked about in manual mode also apply in single shot mode, so I won't cover them again. Single shot will allow you to lock focus on a subject by pressing down and holding the shutter button halfway. Fully depressing the shutter button will take a photo, releasing the shutter button when pressed halfway will unlock focus so you can refocus on another point. So now you will be able to select from four autofocus modes, single point, zone, wide tracking, and all. Single point will create just one focus box that you can adjust the size of and position in the frame. The camera will focus on whatever subject is within the focus box. Obviously, the smaller the focus box and the more focus points you set, the more accurate the focus will be at the expense of focusing speed. Zone autofocus will create a larger focus box and the camera will attempt to use its best judgment to focus on whatever is within that box. There are three sizes to choose from and when you press the shutter down halfway, you will notice multiple smaller green boxes appear within. That will indicate what points the camera has focused on. The larger your zone autofocus area, the faster the camera will achieve focus, but the less predictable it will be and what it focuses on. Next is wide tracking. You cannot change the size of the focus area because the entire scene becomes the focus area. The camera will choose what it thinks is the most exciting subject matter in the scene. This is the fastest focus mode, but at the same time, the most unreliable. Finally, the All option will combine all the autofocus modes and will seamlessly transition between each, depending how small or large the focus box becomes. With All selected, if we push down the rear joystick and scrub through the focus box size with the rear control dial, Notice how as I make the focus box bigger, at a certain point it will go from single point to zone, and then from zone to wide tracking, and then back to single point. AF point display applies to zone AF and wide tracking mode. It will basically just show you all the selectable focus points within the box as grayish squares, and points of focus will light up as green. Next we have face eye detection. This will allow the camera to detect and focus on human faces and eyes, and you have the option to select which eye to prioritize focus on. This setting will also override the autofocus modes if there are detectable human subjects in frame. Also, when eye detect is activated and the camera cannot detect an eye, it will focus on the face instead. Lastly, AF plus MF when switched on will allow you to toggle between using manual focus while in single point focus mode. Basically when you half press and hold the shutter, the camera will first autofocus, then you are able to rotate the focus ring and manually make fine adjustments to the focus. If you let go of the shutter button, you will not be able to re-engage manual focus until you half press and hold again. 
If single point autofocus and focus check is enabled, when you use the focus ring to manual focus, it will zoom in to the focus box area for a more accurate focusing experience. Just keep in mind you won't be able to reposition the focus box and you won't be able to zoom out of focus check unless you let go or fully depress the shutter button. Now we get to continuous mode. Continuous mode will allow the camera to dynamically adjust focus as you move the camera around or as the subject is moving around in a scene as long as you half press the shutter button. The autofocus modes work similarly to single point focus mode but the only difference is it will constantly reevaluate and reacquire focus on whatever subject is within the focus box as long as the shutter is half pressed. Next in settings we have AFC custom settings. This is a powerful setting that will enhance the way your Fujifilm camera tracks subject matter in continuous autofocus. I won't go over this setting in this video as I think it deserves a separate video of its own, but if you take the time to read the descriptions for each one, I think they are pretty self-explanatory. This works really well in zone autofocus and wide tracking modes. The only other setting that applies in continuous mode is eye face detect, but when the shutter is half pressed and held and the camera has detected an eye or a face, it will continue to re-evaluate and reacquire focus dynamically. Now for some extra setting explanations. First up is store AF by orientation. What this does is it will allow you to have one type of autofocus mode in landscape orientation and single point autofocus in portrait orientation. So you could have zone or wide tracking autofocus whilst in landscape and single point autofocus in portrait. You can only increase the number of focus points to 425 when in single point autofocus mode. Pre-AF will perpetually engage autofocus regardless whether or not you have the shutter button half pressed. It will automatically start as soon as you switch the camera on. This feature will place a lot of strain on the battery and the lens focus motor will be constantly working, so you will hear the sound of the lens barrel shifting. I would recommend this feature be off for most use cases. AF Illuminator will activate the assist lamp light at the front of the camera next to the flash when in dimly lit environments to allow the camera to acquire focus faster and more accurately. The drawback is that it isn't discreet. Next is Release Focus Priority. Setting it to Release will allow you to take a photo instantly in single or continuous mode without focusing by fully depressing the shutter button without doing a half press. Changing it to focus and the camera will not take a photo unless it acquires focus first. Corrected AF frame is strictly to do with the optical viewfinder in AF mode. I believe it is used as an aid to resolve parallax issues between the optical viewfinder and the camera lens. I have not yet tried out using the optical viewfinder so I cannot really comment on this feature. Now I want to quickly touch up on the optical viewfinder when it comes to manual focusing. Switch to optical viewfinder mode by shifting the viewfinder selector dial to the right. When in optical viewfinder mode, shift the viewfinder selector dial to the left and a small overlay window will appear at the bottom right corner of the viewfinder. Now you can use the joystick to move the focus box around and the little window will display the zoomed in portion of the box. Now you can focus accurately whilst maintaining a good overview of the entire frame. If you do not have the small window activated, when you are shooting in single focus mode and you have AF, MF and or focus check turned on and you half press the shutter and proceed to turn the focus ring, the optical viewfinder will automatically switch over to the electronic viewfinder and will not return to the optical viewfinder until you let go of the shutter button or after you take the photo. So now you know how to access the different modes and what each setting does. Let's quickly talk about when you would use each focus mode and why. Manual mode is fantastic if you want the most control over focus. With the help of focusing aids, it becomes really intuitive and when paired with back button focusing, it allows you to quickly acquire precise focus. A great example of when to use manual mode would be shooting through glass panels or objects. Depending on where the light is bouncing off the glass and when you are standing, the camera can be tricked. 
That's where manual mode shines. Basically, it's a great mode for shooting static scenes. Single shot mode is great for shooting environments where things are not completely static. It is also the easiest mode to use for beginners, because you simply half press to autofocus and full press to take the picture. With the option of different AF settings and the ability to turn on face and eye detect, this is a safe option to have your camera set to at all times. It can do everything fairly well and is a lot friendlier for beginners who are just starting out. Continuous mode is the undisputed go-to mode for fast-paced action photography. In single point AF, continuous mode is good for tracking subjects moving directly towards you or away from you in a linear path. In zone AF, continuous mode will maintain focus on whatever is within the focus box, even when you move your camera. In wide tracking AF, the camera will continuously focus on any moving subject in the frame. So that about wraps things up. Learning all three focus modes will make you more confident in taking photos in any situation. Find what works best for you, and remember, practice makes perfect. Thanks guys, and until next time.